listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello and welcome to IELTS podcast. My name is Ben Worthington and you are listening to one of the first to uh, one of the first podcasts entirely dedicated to passing the IELTS exam. We've been doing this the longest. We've probably been doing it the most professionally. We've got one of the most popular sites on IELTS and passing IELTS quickly. Uh, one of the most uh, popular sites on the internet, which is quite a claim, but with the amount of visitors we get, if you saw that, you would definitely agree with me. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to look at the smart approach to passing IELTS. I've been talking about this in previous tutorials, and I just want to, I think it deserved a full tutorial. And I'm also going to share with you a grammar point, and it's one of these stylistic ones. Now, those who are listening for a while will understand that when we're aiming for a seven, eight, or nine in the writing, we should really be not only focusing on improving, but uh, not only focusing on correcting, but also on improving and introducing stylistic elements that even native English speakers might not be aware of. And this is what we need. You know, if we're going to a university in Bradford, England, or in Manchester, England, or even, I don't know, Aberdeen in Scotland or Vancouver in Canada, wherever you're going, whichever university you're going to, having knowledge of these tools, these stylistic elements, is definitely going to accelerate your writing progress and your ability to communicate. So today's tutorial, we're going to look at focusing on practicing with tools, not merely information. Now, merely is a useful phrase. It's not very common. It's higher level, and I'm going to explain how to use it in a minute. So let's get to it. Before, actually, no, before we get to it, let me just explain who I am very briefly for those who are tuning in for the first time. My name's Ben Worthington. I used to be a standard general catch all English teacher for about a year or two. And then I was like, nah, let's focus on the IELTS. Why? Because IELTS students are motivated, they're going places, they've got ambition. And it's a perfect match for a person like me. I like getting results. I'm quite ambitious, quite dynamic, you know. And this is why I decided to focus on the IELTS exam. But the first time I was teaching uh, IELTS, um, preparing a student for the IELTS exam, it was horrific. It's so painful. I was trying to explain how to do, uh, to what extent do you agree, disagree essay. And we were just going around in, in circles. The student even said, she's like, Ben, are we repeating ourselves? Are we contradicting it? And I was like, oh my word. And I never forget, I'll never forget that moment. And that's the, that evening, I decided I'm going to get help. I'm going to reach out to other tutors. I'm going to search online. And that's what gave birth to IELTS Podcast because I started reaching out to tutors. I recorded the conversations, released the podcast, fast forward, released the course, getting a lot of success for the students and more or less that brings me what to that brings me right up to today We're producing tutorials producing courses we getting results for students now recently we've launched an essay checking tool and this is one of the points that i'm going to mention today is that you know you're here, you're listening because you want to pass the IELTS exam, but you don't just want to pass, do you? You want to really crush it. You want to get that band seven. You want to tell your friends you got band seven, tell your family you're off to Canada. You know, you're going to change the course of your life when you get this exam. And I want to share with something, share something with you that's really important. Now, if you are preparing with merely information, you're doing it wrong. It's honestly, it's like trying to build a skyscraper with a hammer and a bunch of nails. You know, you're not going to get there. It's an, out, an outdated approach 
That won't get you where you need to go. It won't get you to Canada, just using information. Now, there's five reasons for this. If you're just using information, it's time consuming. You know, you're going through tutorial after tutorial, after blog, after blog article, after random search. It's time consuming. It's also disorganized. You're going to get swamped in a lot of information there's not going to be really a clear structure of what to do next and it just compounds it just adds to the frustration and when you're preparing for an exam you do not want that frustration you want a clear mind you want confidence also another reason why using information just information is a bad idea is because it's inefficient you know you're missing out on the opportunity to practice and to get that feedback especially to get instant feedback it's like trying to ride a bike or trying to learn how to ride a bike by using a book you can read 20 million books about riding a bike until you get on you're not going to get in you're not going to get much better fine um, penultimately it's outdated you know using information is, i mean just look at the look at the timeline Originally, you wanted to prepare for the exam. Maybe you'd go to the library, get some books about English, you know? Then the internet came along. Just do a Google search. You think you're there. No. The thing is, nowadays, we've got this interaction. We've got tools. And modern exams call for modern preparation techniques. It's quite straightforward. The final reason is it's so boring. <laughs> Studying with a book there, there was the interaction you know you don't even have a tutor in front of you it's boring and this can lead to burnout it can lead to you know just switching off and I'm guilty of this as well when I'm fed up I easily just slide my hand into my pocket pull out the phone straight on to I don't know whatsapp reddit tiktok whatever and this is the this is why actually I started just turning off the phone and putting it in my bag far away <laughs> and and this way it just keeps me disciplined. Now, let me tell you what successful students are doing nowadays. Most of them are ditching the old ways. They're not searching anymore. They're, they're not, you know, just watching YouTube. The smart students nowadays, they're using tools. Why are they using tools? Well, it's a smart way to prepare. It's faster, it's more effective. You know, it's more efficient. You know, they cut out all the clutter. They let you pinpoint the area you want to work on. You can also get instant feedback. You know, like our AI essay checking tool will give you that feedback. It's a live, I say instant. The free checker gives it you instantly, but you want to be on the premium one, and that takes 20 seconds, but come on. I can call that instant, <laughs> especially compared to waiting 24 hours or a couple of days for it. And if we put it in those terms, in my, in my mind, in my world, it makes, um, it is more or less instant. It gives you a more tailored learning experience. It's adapted, you know. You open a book and it's like the grammar, the grammar needed for band seven and you don't really know which area you want to focus on or you should focus on. You might have conditionals mastered already, but you don't really know that confidently unless you get the feedback. So, you know, that's why it's tailored learning, it's adapted. You can move faster this way. Also, you know, if you're using tools like simulated tests, and we've even got a timer on our essay checking tool. It gives you a taste of the real deal. Okay, now I have said in the past, spend an hour, two hours writing your essay. But you, I've also said, when uh, the closer the exam is, the nearer you want to be to a simulated exam. So that's why the timer is really handy and you need to start reducing your time there. Also, using tools, it makes your learning more interactive. You're more likely to have fun. It's more likely that you remember what you're learning. Also, using interactive tools, you can track your progress. You can see how much you've improved. And almost finally, 
you get to study when you want to and where you want to you know uh, you don't have to be in front of the tutor imagine you hire a tutor and you've booked a class for Thursday afternoon but you've got a terrible headache more than likely you've got to power through that class anyway but if you if you're using tools especially online tools you can study where and when you want to finally it's going to boost your confidence it's more effective you're going to be better prepared and we all know confidence is half the battle so how would you use these tools effectively well if you're using our online essay checker this is what you'd do you get your question and you can find go to ieltspodcast.com and just put into google ieltspodcast.com task two questions we've got a list about of over 250 <laughs> so there's no shortage there write your essay as i said before if your exam's in a month's time spend an hour an hour and a half get it right if it's coming up next week then probably just want to spend an hour on it and work backwards or if it's coming up next week and you've got seven full days to prepare then spend an hour an hour and a half and just gradually work towards being able to write an essay within 40 minutes paste your essay in run the check find out which areas you need to work on now work on them instantly don't just leave it there and add another essay research those areas just pick one break it down into the smallest components correct those mistakes after you've done your research submit the same essay ideally now you've mastered the grammar point that came up okay right make a note of your writing this is what i do all the time nowadays it's insanely an insanely powerful technique just write a debrief in my case in this case it would be worked on conditionals almost mastered them the next point i need to work on is articles and you just write that to yourself in your word document on your phone whatever you're working on this is the time for a little bit of information you know i'm not saying information is redundant you obviously need some but smart students are using both nowadays mainly more the tools so you find that information about how to use articles maybe you watch a quick tutorial but you apply it you don't sit there passively like a couch potato watching the next 20 tutorials you're not going to pass IELTS that way you get what you need you write down you apply it on the next essay that you write okay also here's a side note if you continually struggle with that point um, and you've got your exam coming up in about three or four days and no matter how hard you've been working on it is still struggling with it then perhaps just put it in your error correction document and if you cannot get to the point where every time you use an article it's correct at least aim for being able to correct a bad mistake if you get my drift so what i'm saying here is put it in your error correction document next time you write and you write an essay you go and look for the use of articles and then retroactively afterwards you look and then you test it uh, test your grammar knowledge and you correct it if you believe it needs correcting doing it this way will just help you stay in the flow of writing your essay which is quite important especially in exam conditions next step write an essay a new essay on a new topic and check for the mistakes that you've been making previously if you still haven't solved it it goes into your error correction document ideally though you want to be writing it correctly every time i know it's easier said than done however with the essay checker this is just going to speed up the whole process this is one way you can use the essay checker to improve your writing it's quite granular it's quite step by step we had one student who used the machine gun approach who just kept on writing essay after essay after essay until she stumbled across um, what the essay checker was requesting that's her approach it took her a lot of coffee we call it the machine gun approach in previous tutorials we've talked about this now another tool 
you can use, which we should not forget, are frameworks. These are solid structures, especially for IELTS Academic Writing Task 1 and Academic Task 2. Use these structures and it's a case of dropping in your ideas. After you drop in your ideas, you should have a well-structured, logical, extremely coherent essay. Off the top of my head, here is one basic structure. We have the body paragraph, for example. We rephrase the question or, our, or put in our position. Then we develop it. This is because. Then we might add an example or a hypothetical example. And if we're going even further, we develop that hypothetical example further by just pursuing it and exploring the consequences. So if pollution is not solved, there could be um, there could be extremely dangerous consequences for society. One of these consequence, consequences would be um, extreme weather patterns disrupting the water flow, water flow of communities. This would could inevitably lead to disease, drought or other unintended consequences for not addressing the initial climate change issue. You see what I did there? I developed it all in a hypothetical way. Extremely useful skill. So that's one framework. In our new course, we've got... The thing is, with these frameworks, what I found was that if I use the same framework again and again, you know, a certain framework for to what extent you agree, disagree, the same framework for, oh, sorry, a different framework for the advantages, disadvantages. What I realized is that we're using the same language, the same sentences, and then we just drop in the ideas and it becomes incredibly faster, incredibly uh, easier to improve and this is one of the tools um, that smart students are using nowadays. Now finally let's just do a quick les lesson on the word merely. It's useful, it's not very common, it's quite easy to use. Merely is more than just a word, it adds a little bit of a punch to your sentence. It's like saying only or simply with just a little bit more flair. And again, as you know, I am a massive fan of working on improving your language skills rather than just correcting them. That's where we really get to the band seven, eight or nine. It just makes my day. <laughs> so, for example, you're, you are not merely studying for the IELTS. You're opening doors to new opportunities. There we go. So we just substitute the word only or simply for merely, you know, and it's just that lift. So you're not only studying for the IELTS exam, you're opening doors to new opportunities. Standard, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Normal, standard, boring sentence. Now let's add a little flair. You're not merely studying for the IELTS. You're opening doors to new opportunities. There we go. You can use this in your speaking and in your writing. And I recommend you do it. And I recommend also write out a couple of sentences. Get feedback on those sentences. Use it a few times in your uh, today. Today, you know. McDonald's is not merely a place to get food. It's a place to meet friends and socialize and get free internet. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, so try using it today in a few everyday sentences you know like i don't know this uh, new mac is not merely a computer it's a tool for uh for m that allows me to pursue the most creative and of endeavors whatever you want to say you know my dad is not merely a grocery worker he is an extremely caring loving successful model for myself and my son okay i think that my that came to mind because we've recently had father's day <laughs> um all right so again 
keep moving forward. You've got this. You can do this. And thank you for listening. If you know any students that are struggling with IELTS exam, just forward the link to this tutorial. You know, if they've got their exam coming up soon and need to pass, then that information about using, <laughs> how contradictory, but that this tutorial about using tools rather than information would definitely accelerate their progress. So have a super day. And if you need to pass the exam fast, go to IELTS Podcast, sign up. You'll get a quick crash course on how to use the essay checker, how to improve your score, and how to use tools rather than information while you're on your quest for not merely passing an IELTS exam, not merely passing an IELTS exam, but changing your life and changing your life for the next decade and that's a lofty goal that's an ambitious hefty goal and i admire you for pursuing it and that's why we're on the same page all the best have a great day thank you for listening IELTSpodcast.com.